After a tough loss on Friday night, the Heat bounced back with a rare blowout, leading by 45 at one point to an easy win. It was the perfect bounce back, but this is a reflection of Miami, or is it a reflection of their opponent? Who stepped up to lead the team? We break it all down in today's episode of Locked on Heat. You are Locked on Heat, your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome to Locked On Heat, your daily podcast on the Miami Heat. I'm Wes Goldberg, editor at allyoucaneat.com. Joining me as always, longtime NBA reporter David Rommel. However you're tuning in on YouTube, Odyssey, or your favorite podcast app, thanks for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use the code all lowercase locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Recording this on Sunday night after the Heat's blowout win over the Cavs. But before we get to our takeaways from the game, we wanted to tell you all about something that we're just really excited about. On April 5th, we are going to be holding our watch party for the Heat's game in Houston. The watch party is not going to be in Houston. The Heat will be in Houston. We'll still be here. Uh, it's going to be at the Taurus in, in the Taurus in Coconut Grove. That's yes. where we're going to be doing it. So we've been talking about uh, doing a watch party on the show. Uh, we were really encouraged by the the response from our listeners and our viewers who said that they'd be interested in watching a Heat game with us. The owners of the Taurus uh, reached out, and we were able to put this together. So we're we're really hoping as many as you guys come by as possible, have a drink, have something to eat. Uh, we're really excited to meet you. Uh, David, I know you're excited about this too. Yeah, no, Taurus is a, a, a coconut grow staple, like a South Florida staple in terms of like old bars, classic bars. And yeah. uh, it's been uh, refurbished, new ownership, a new management, and it's just a, a great location. And they've got drink specials for all of our guests too. And we can't wait just to see people that, the, again, as you mentioned, the excitement. Yes, a watch party. Everybody responding so positively and favorably. I know we did this a couple of years ago, and it was great to meet people. I'm looking forward to seeing all those people and some, and then some. Bring oh, yeah. your friends. Bring, if you, even if they don't listen to the show, bring your friends. Bring your your partners. Bring anybody you want. And we we just would love to talk Heat basketball, watch the game together, and hopefully. It'll be another heat win on the road against a very surprisingly good Houston Rockets team that has bounced back. I think they've won, what is it, nine of their last ten. They've mm. been really, really good of late. Uh, Jalen Green has been fantastic. So it should be a great game. If, if you know any Rockets friends, bring them by too. We can have some trash talk. It'll be fun, you know? We'll, oh. <laughs> why not? Um, yeah. yeah, so just really excited about it. We're going we're gonna to promote it, provide more details as we get closer again. But it is April 5th. Miami Heat at Houston will be at the Taurus in Coconut Grove. But uh, all right, let's get to the game from tonight. The Heat beat the Cavs 121 to 84. This one was uh, over pretty early on, uh, David. It was mm. kind of over. It felt like it was over by halftime, but you can never be too careful in today's NBA. But then by midway through the third quarter, the Heat went up by 40 points. And at that point, yeah, we knew it was over. The Cavs did not look like they wanted to be there. Um, that was maybe my biggest takeaway of why this was yeah. such a dominant one-sided game. But also credit to Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo for setting the tone early on. Uh, Jimmy was playing with pace. He goes out uh, to take his first quarter rest. Bam just takes uh, the baton right from where Jimmy left off. And he's he's getting to the basket. He's playing great defensively, doing all the Bam things. Um, and we get a nice, boring, drama-free win for what feels like the first time this season. Uh, what was your takeaway? I don't take know what away, to do with my hands. No, it was just, uh, <laughs> I think that was... That, that, that sums it up pretty well because, you know, they welcomed Evan Mobley back into the rotation tonight. He had missed a, a lot of time due to injury, and he comes back into the game, and and he just – they looked off. Like, they didn't know how to run their usual pick and roll. He didn't – he seemed like a little bit out of place. He wasn't quite the effective player that he ha has been before he went down with injury. And Miami, to your point, just capitalized on everything. Well, you know, Cleveland look a step slow. Miami look a step quicker than normal, even certainly than the, they, than the way they played against the New Orleans Pelicans on Friday. But they just took advantage of a, a, a really good Cavs team who's third in the Eastern Conference. And Miami just never stopped. They never let go. When the Cavs tried to cut it to, to within single digits or anything like that, the Heat responded. Uh, again, as you said, it was a blowout by the end of the second quarter, and they just doubled up on that. Great shooting, great all-around team play. Everybody sharing the ball. It was a very fun 
and free environment at the Kinsaya Center. Everybody was really excited about it. And you can see these Heat players, like, even they were not quite sure what to do with themselves because they rarely are in these kinds of situations. But yeah. of the two blowouts, of some of the, the rare blowouts that they have this season, two of them have been against the Cavaliers. So yeah. I think that's worth noting as well. It is, and I do want to touch on that here in a second. But you mentioned, like, they didn't – even the Heat didn't really know what to do with this blowout. You could tell them, like, yeah. they were like, all right, guys, we're, we're up by 40 points now, but, like, foot on the gas, don't let go do? of the rope. Eric Spolstra yeah. calls a timeout when the Cavs, like, cut into the lead and turn it into, like, a 32-point game instead of a 40-point game. And Spolstra's like, all right, enough of that. I'm going to pretend to coach for a little bit. Like, guys, like, you know, keep playing more basketball, whatever he said to the guys in the huddle. Um, but so it was pretty funny to kind of watch them. And then of course, Jimmy basically sits out the whole fourth quarter. Bam doesn't whole, play a whole lot down the stretch. And so those guys get uh, a, a well-deserved break at the end of this game. Jimmy played 24 and a half minutes. Bam played just under 28 minutes total. Like I said, very well-deserved because they brought it, you know, and we talk about that all the time. It's, you know, no Duncan Robinson, no Tyler Hero, no Kevin Love, just uh, no Jaime Hawkeyes Jr. Just a ton of guys missing. Right. And the easiest way to make up for the guys missing are not the guys at the end of the bench stepping up. It's for the stars to play even better because that's what they're capable of doing. And I love the way that Jimmy Butler came out in this game. He was playing with pace in semi trend. Like that's when, you know, like there's certain like things that Jimmy Butler does where you're like, Oh, okay. He's sort of bringing yeah. it tonight. And when he, yeah. instead of just walking the ball up and letting basically everybody catch up to him, and then he can just sort of ISO or post up and do the kind of the stuff that he's comfortable doing when he kind of pushes the pace a little bit, hits that quick first step and semi transition, doesn't wait for the defense to catch up, doesn't wait for his own teammates to catch up. He's like, you know what? I got Darius Garland in front of me. I'm just going to take him off the dribble. You know, and he should yeah. he, he he should do that every night, quite frankly, but he doesn't. But when he does do it, he's able to set the tone. And that's what happened in this one. And so Miami gets out to a, a early lead and yeah. it just felt like Cleveland was just like, well, we don't have it tonight. After about like eight minutes, they were just like, yeah, it's just not our night, I guess, you know? And they just played Tristan Thompson for the entire second half. And that was it. <laughs> and it was, and so I don't know. Again, Cleveland looked like they'd rather be next door at Ultra than playing this basketball game tonight. I don't know what was what was going on with them, but they're three and seven in their last ten. They're in a in a slump, probably in the worst time of the year for them. Yeah. Um, like you mentioned, they're having a hard time working guys back. Donovan Mitchell obviously missing for them is a big deal. We don't really know when he's going to come back for them, but Miami did the thing they had to do. They stepped on their throats. They didn't let them come back in this game, and it was a much needed win. You mentioned the fact that they've now blown out Cleveland twice this year. This is a bigger reason to me, David, to get out of the playing tournament. Because if you can get a date with the Cavaliers in the first round, right? We already know the, the problems of playing like Boston and Milwaukee. Those are the two best teams in the Eastern Conference right now. But if you could get out of the first round, if you can get out of the play-in and face Cleveland in the first round, I mean, how many people would actually be picking the Cavs based on where these teams are at at this stage of the season, right? Like not I feel like most people would be picking the Heat. That's not really the point. I just say like if you're the Heat. More motivation to get out of the playing tournament, knowing that this this Cavs team that you've had success against could be on the other side of it. But how many of those games were without Donovan Mitchell? Like I understand, I, I just I'm a little wary of saying bring on the Cavaliers because this was really a a poor version of that Cavaliers team. And of course, there's no guarantee, and I guess you could make that same argument about Miami. But I think it also, moreover, I think it just shows that. When Miami plays their style of play the way they did tonight, this is a team that's capable of beating anybody rather than just looking forward to any opponent, like I, I, any one particular opponent. And I think the Heat would say the same thing. This is the best version of themselves. It shows a version of them that is capable of contending, that is capable of beating the Boston Celtics or the Milwaukee Bucks or any of the top teams in the Eastern Conference. And it's more about Miami, in my opinion, about getting them to play this style of basketball, of, of Jimmy Butler playing with pace, of Bam being aggressive, of everybody stepping up in their own way, of getting contributions from role players rather than saying, you know what, we can do this against Cleveland and maybe only against Cleveland. Yeah, and it's also worth noting, too, that this was the first game that the Heat have played the Cavs in and had Bam out of bio. This was Bam's first time playing the Cavs Good all point. year. So, um, no, you're, you're right about that. I do think that there is something to be said, though, of it's very clear that it's Boston and Milwaukee at the top. And then after that, yes. like the drop off between the, those teams in Cleveland is pretty substantial. And I would even say, like, if you're asking me who the better team is right now, I think the Knicks are a better team than the Cavs, despite the record. I think the That's Orlando fair. Magic are better than the Cavs, despite the record. And and yeah, the injuries are a big deal. But they are a team very similar to the Heat that have just been sort of dealing with injuries 
all season long. And so if you can get him in the first round while some of those injuries are still happening or fresh, then, you know, it bodes well. And also they're just not as good as Milwaukee or Boston, even when they are healthy. So there's that too. Um, but let's talk more about the Miami Heat. Credit Cookies is next here on Locked on Heat. Today's episode of Locked on Heat is brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, that you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th, so get started at Robinhood dot com slash boost subscription fees apply and now for some legal info the claim as of the first quarter of 2024 validated by radius global market research today's episode is also brought to you by ebay motors passion drive and patience what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive ebay motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. And with over 122 million parts for your car, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions do apply, and eBay guarantee fit only available to U.S. customers. Thanks for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and on your favorite podcast app. Hit that like button on the video if you're watching us on YouTube. Leave us a five-star rating and review if you're listening to us on a podcast. As you know, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel called Locked On Sports Today. Baseball fans, mark your calendars. For March 20th, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the best MLB season preview, coming exclusively to Locked On Sports today on March 20th, 7 p.m. Eastern. Be the first to get the local insights of the uh, from the local MLB experts of the Locked On Podcast Network. Find it March 20th, 7 p.m. Eastern time on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Well, David, it's another Miami Heat win, which means it's time for the tastiest segment of Locked On Heat. But Locked On Heat, it's time to get in the kitchen and whip up some credit cookies. Who is getting credit cookies for tonight's performance? You know, it almost puts us in a really tough place because so many players had contributions across the board. This isn't like a, a typical clutch win for Miami where somebody kind of steps up or you get a couple of guys stepping up. There were some top performances, but you got such a, a number of players in this blowout win putting up points, putting up statistics, getting good contributions. But I think there were four players in particular who really stood out in tonight's game. You mentioned before, it starts with Jimmy Butler, the straw that stirs a drink. He had a really good game, impactful in his limited playing time. Bam, but a bio looking very aggressive. I think three cookies apiece for them. And then two for Haywood Highsmith, who was fantastic off the bench, brought defense, brought energy. He was cutting off ball, and he was perfect from three-point range. I think that deserves two cookies and also one last credit cookie for Nikola Jovic. He looked really, really – actually, I'm sorry. That, that, my math is off. Two cookies yep. for Nikola Jovic. So two for Nikola, two for Haywood, and three apiece for Jimmy and Bam. Let's start with Nikola Jovic there because we already talked about Jimmy and Bam, like you said. So, the again, that third quarter was kind of interesting because it felt like the Miami Heat were, okay, what do we do? We're up really big. We don't want to blow this. This would be an absolute disaster. We've lost three straight at home. We don't want it to happen again. This would be the worst loss of the season if we somehow find a way to blow this. We have found ways to blow games like this before <laughs> this year or at least blow these leads and then kind of eke out with a win. Like, what do we do? And even though that they were even though they were up as much as that they were up after halftime, it still felt like, okay, second half, it's a whole other half of basketball. Who's going to provide the spark? Jimmy had the spark. Bam had the spark in the first half. Is it going to be one of those guys? No. Well, not really. They, they were a little bit, but it was also Nikola Jovic who hit back-to-back -back threes in the third quarter. Um, had a great uh, defensive possession on Marcus Morris, who was doing exactly what you thought Marcus Morris would do with his team down thirty. I'm going to will us back into this game by going like four for eighteen from from the field or something. Like Marcus Morris, like 
give me the cape. I got us, guys. I'm going to bring us back. And it didn't work. But he tried. He, he started jab stepping against Nico from like 20 feet out. Nico just stood in front of him, had his hands out, good defensive posture, and didn't bite for any of the jabs, didn't bite for any of the pump fakes, just kept his position, stayed between his man and the basket, forced an air ball for Marcus Morris. So uh, I, I loved everything that we saw from Nico. Those back-to-back -back threes, the defensive stop, all sort of in that early part of the third quarter, I thought was the spark Miami needed to just basically keep the thing going. Who would have thought that at this point in the season, with Miami being so inconsistent and up and down and dealing with injuries and everything else like that, considering where he was at the start of the season, that we'd be talking about Nikola Jovic in terms of his defensive presence. And yet, yeah. it's very, very real. If there's any takeaway from this season, I think it's the fact that Nikola Jovic has established himself as a legitimate starter. And I think I'm starting to lean to the idea that he will be the starter moving into the playoffs. I know Spo always has some odd design and maybe he'll do a little tinkery. Maybe he'll put in Caleb. Who knows? But I think Nikola has shown that he is a solid starter level player in the NBA, which is a huge leap from where he was. Like we had high expectations, but those were dashed pretty quickly when despite whatever he had shown during the FIBA World Cup over the offseason, it didn't necessarily translate or carry over, particularly on defensive end and in the rebounding category, which were the things that he needed to improve on the most. And I think he would go so far as to tell you that that, that exactly was the case. He's worked on it. He told us in our recent interview, he's put on the weight, he's put on the muscle, he's done the work, and you can, you can see it. Like in the first quarter, second quarter, he had some really good defensive possessions where he was switching on one possession in particular. He can't, he took on Okoro, he took on Darius Garland, moved his feet well. Like I, I'm not, he's definitely not a defensive stopper or anything like that, but he cannot be exploited as easily as he had mm -hmm. been earlier in his career. And I, I think it shows real growth from him. So that is really promising. And if he could just continue to tie that together with the potential that he has offensively, the three-point shot, pushing the pace, the rebounding, which is significantly improved as well, I think he could be a really high-level player. Not to poke holes in your in your argument, because I agree with everything that oh, you said, no. but he did have zero rebounds today. Um, <laughs> he didn't have a rebound tonight. <laughs> but I, I, I do agree with you. And, and the three-point shooting is so interesting with him, too. He's shooting over 40% from three, kind of quietly. I don't yep. like when you talk about like today's NBA, if you can have a guy who is 6'10, who can push the pace and make threes at a 40% clip or better, that is a luxury to have. I mean, I think Unicorn. every team is yeah, every team is basically looking for a guy like that, right? Um right. and defensively he is getting better. You're right. Like, let's we don't have to go full blown, like, don't don't hey, try Pritchard. Nico. Don't try him. It's like you could try him. It, it'll be you'll probably be fine. But he's a good defense, like he, he's not the He's not the weak point that he was, and obviously his size is really helpful, right? The length and stuff. So even when he does get beat, he's able to catch up in a way that smaller guys, like even like a Tyler Hero, because he's a guard, can't, right? Yeah, and so right. um, I think that's obviously helpful. Uh, the other part with, with the making the threes tonight is Cleveland, I guess having seen the film uh, from that Pelicans loss, that, that bad heat performance right. where they, they it looked like it was the first time they ever saw a 3-2 a zone ever, <laughs> And, and, and so they just couldn't score and they just kept settling for threes and they kept missing them. And that was the opposite tonight, right? Like they got the threes against Cleveland zone. Cleveland brought the zone out, I, I guess, assuming that they could get a similar success to what the Pelicans had the other night. And Nico and a bunch of those other guys started hitting their threes in a way that they didn't against New Orleans. And, you know, sometimes the, 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 the analysis is that easy. Did you make the threes or did you not make the threes? And tonight they made the yeah, threes and Nico was a big part of that. Um, the other guy you mentioned was Haywood Highsmith. I do think it's at least worth um, talking about him a little bit more here. I just, it's weird. I don't know where he fits in when this rotation is healthy. I still, like, even tonight, 18 points on 7 of 10 shooting, 4 for 4 from 3-point range, had uh, had a steal in this game, did pick up 5 fouls. Oh, no, that wasn't him. That was Thomas Bryant who had 5 fouls. Sorry, reading the box score wrong. But I thought he was really good defensively, and when he's hitting those threes... Yes. He becomes a legit two-way factor. It's just the three-point shot for him is so streaky that he doesn't really get a chance to to kind of see it through, right? He basically it's like, okay, if the if if there's a bunch of guys ahead of you in the rotation injured, you're just gonna go out there and get to do all these things. And if we have a healthy rotation, sorry, we just don't we don't know if your threes are gonna go in tonight because you're just not gonna see the floor. But credit to him for making the most of the opportunity, especially these last couple nights when the Heat have been really banged up. 
yeah, that first three pointer that he hit, uh, you know, as we've said so often, like it kind of sets the, the tone for him, like mentally mm. and in terms of his confidence. It was when they had first seen that zone, and it was a possession where they just couldn't seem to generate any movement whatsoever. They kept moving the ball to no avail. They couldn't just penetrate the zone. They didn't know what to do with it. Shot clock expiring, winds up in Haywood's hands, and you're going, okay, well, you know, who knows what's going to happen with this? It could be an air ball. Instead, he drills it. And then from that point, you can see his confidence rising. I really liked his off-ball movement in addition to the four three-pointers that he hit. He went 4-4. But he also he was constantly under the basket, just like the forgotten man out there. And he's got that little timing with a hook shot there, and kind of like a push shot where he's like along the baseline. Mm -hmm. and, and either Jimmy or Bam, whoever has the ball at the top, can see him as he's kind of trailing along the baseline. And nobody really keeps up with him. Nobody really tracks him. And he gets lost in the shuffle there, and he winds up having an open look over at the basket. Tried finishing with a dunk that unfortunately caromed off, but you know it, it was it was a really good night for him. And you know Haywood, he's always going to bring it with a defensive effort, despite his size limitations and everything else like that. So you just hope that the offense is consistent enough where he's not going to be a negative out there, uh, you know, because of his defense is always going to be at a high level. But if he's not scoring, if he's turning the ball over, if he looks kind of like, like lacking confidence, then. It's not, there's no point really in having him out on the floor, but tonight was the best version of Haywood. And you hope that you can see those kind of contributions at least at, yep. you know, regularly during the playoffs. Absolutely. Um, and one of the guys that was hurt in front of him, Duncan Robinson, tonight, we got an update on mm. his situation. Doesn't sound awesome, David. We're going to talk about that next year. No, on not. Heat. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks. What's Price Picks? Well, it's America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports because it's just you against the numbers, not sharks, not professionals, not anybody like that. You just have to worry about the projections, the stat projections, and you pick more than or less than the stats on two to six players, and then you just watch the winnings roll in, and it's so easy and simple to play you can make your picks and submit an entry in less than 60 seconds can imagine winning something in less than a minute it's that easy that's what makes prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app quick withdrawals easy gameplay and an enormous selection of players and stat types that's what contributes to making it the number one daily fantasy sports app and right now if you, uh, our users go to prizepicks.com slash lockdown nba and you use the code lockdown nba you get a first deposit match of up to 100 dollars that's prize picks dot com slash locked on ba and use the code locked on ba get that first deposit match about to a hundred dollars price picks pick more pick less it's that easy thanks for making locked on heat your first listen every day make sure you're subscribed on youtube and on your favorite podcast app thanks to everybody who sent in questions on twitter using the hashtag ask hello heat you can reach us locked on heat at gmail.com locked on heat on instagram before we get to these questions, Duncan Robinson missed the last two games with what the team is calling left facet syndrome. I Googled it, David. Yeah. It doesn't sound great. Um, so, you know, he, he, he got, he saw the specialist, got some scans done, all these things, and this is what they came up with. And essentially what it boils down to is, is it's supposed to be very painful uh, throughout the lower body. It could be impacting his legs. And all these things, which obviously for a basketball player and a shooter is is problematic. Um, I don't. It's a pain management thing, you know. I started yeah. looking up like you know treatments and stuff. It's just a lot of like those big steroid shots and things like that. The and the PC uh, the PRP shots and and those kinds of things, similar to what uh, Tyler Hero is dealing with. But now Miami between Hero and Duncan Robinson are down their two best shooters. And, you know, there's games like this where it doesn't matter a whole lot. Then there's games like the one against the Pelicans where it matters a whole lot. Right. And I right. think I'll, I'll go out on a limb and say it's probably going to matter a whole lot more often than not. So uh, doesn't sound great uh, for either of Miami's sharpshooters, scores, shooting guards. Um, but this is not what you wanted to see from Duncan Robinson. He had to leave that one game early, couldn't come back in the second half. And then he's missed the last two because of this. And we don't know. There's still no timetable for his return. Yeah. Uh the good thing is that Miami catches a slight break in terms of their schedule. They have two games at home. They take on the Golden State Warriors on Tuesday, and then they don't play again until Friday. So that's mm -hmm. kind of a nice space there of only two games and five nights while he's rehabbing and getting treatment at, at in, in the home. So hopefully he can bounce back from that. Like, look, at, at this point, there's no there's no real uh, 
validity to just kind of dissecting it or anything like that. We don't know what's going to happen with him. I don't think he knows what's going to happen. He just continues to have to, he has to continue to fight through it, or, you know, it might just be to the point where it takes him out. And as far as the Heat are concerned, well, we've just been through this so many times before. And as cliche as it sounds, and I know that you hate the expression, but, you know, it really is next man up. I don't know who's going to fight. I don't know who can step up for what Duncan has provided this They've season. been asking like Patty his... Mills to do it, and that's been very hit or miss. And that's yeah, putting that's, it has not worked out. Yeah. DeLon Wright has not stepped up. You, you need to get back one of Duncan or Tyler. And, yeah. and look, of course, that will also benefit by the addition of Kevin Love once he returns as well because he's another great three-point spacer when those shots are hitting. So, you know, I, it, it's just you're going to have to find a way of beating opponents. I don't know that Miami can beat opponents – consistently in a four game series without either Tyler or Duncan on the floor. And as such, I know just... that they can't, there's no way. I mean, <laughs> Patty Mills, DeLon Wright, like that's not getting it done. Like Cole Swider is a nice three point shooter and he can fill in and, and eat up some minutes here in the regular season, but two way guys aren't even allowed to play in playoff games. So that's not even really an option as, as and it's not a great option to begin with because the guys barely played this season. So I, their season's over if they don't have one of these guys back. Now, I don't mean to be too dramatic, but I think that's just being realistic. Like you need one no, of these shooters, and so um, we don't know. But we if you can catch lucky, these guys get a back. win. Like, yeah, you might have like an offensive explosion, like the way you did tonight. But you know, that's that's not something you want to rely on consistently. Right. You want to have them out there because of the threat that they pose, because of their ability to space the floor, etc. I mean, having two of those three would be great. Having at least, uh, you know either Tyler and Kevin Love or Duncan and Kevin Love, like you, you need to have him out on the floor. Uh, mm -hmm. You just wish him all the best because he was having such a great season and you don't want him to show any kind of rust. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, if it's just a pain management and a pain tolerance, again, you don't want to put his, you know his integrity into question or anything like that, obviously. But you hope that maybe he can find his way back sooner rather than later. And, and hopefully he can just continues to get to work in order to be able to maintain it and adjust and, and hopefully it doesn't creep up. It just the suddenness of what really threw me off because mm -hmm. the game before was one of the best games of his career where he had like 30 points and it was really, really incredible with his playmaking and that balance of scoring and everything else like that. And the next game, he's out. And, and, and well, maybe there was one game in between there where he had right. left in the first no, half. No, but it, it, it's, it's more than just pain management too. It is, it is like, it basically, the reason why you have to get the scans done. And I, again, I did like a Google search on this. So this is my yeah, understanding. Based medical on a professional. Search. Right. <laughs> Uh, but it's it you know the, un the the tightness and the uncomfortableness it mimics a lot of other sort of back injuries too and so that's that's what this basically comes down to so if this guy's tight from like his lower back down to his knees he ain't gonna play well sounds, you know and no, so it's, terrible, it's, yeah. it's right so they get the treatment hopefully he's gonna come back again don't not trying to be dramatic and say he's gonna be out for the season but it's just sort of those one of those things where you, you don't know how long he's gonna be out you just get the treatment and just wait until your body responds. Uh, the way that you hope it responds. But let's move on to some questions. This one comes from EJ Brooksy. Is this the most confusing team in Heat hmm. history, David? What do you think? No, 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 no. It's, it's the more 2016 squad. 2016 mm, by far. The 41, 41, 41. Yeah, 41. I mean, nothing. Nothing beats 10 and 31 and then 31 and 10. Like that, no, no. that, that is, is that confusing. Or is, I mean, it was crazy. It was the biggest swing. I don't. I, I feel like I pretty much understand that they they sucked for the the beginning of the season and then they were good for the second half of the season. Like I pretty much got that figured out. <laughs> like it's so easy. It's like how, how do you go from being one of the a lottery bound team to being elite and beating like the Golden two State words. Warriors in their peak? You know, in the dynasty. Yeah, Dion Waiters. Dion Waiters. I know. Yeah, that's two words for in basketball, baby. Best words. <laughs> oh, real hoopers know. Uh, yeah, this one's up there. Seven is, you know, is, yeah. That might be a. No. You know what would be fun is if we did like a draft of most confusing Heat teams. We could do that on another show where we could just like draft like most whatever Heat teams. It's um, the last four seasons, and then in 2016, I think right right at the top, right? Yeah. Or maybe I would put this maybe one. Maybe 2017. I would put. Ooh, that was a good one. Yeah. Because you didn't really know what was going on. That was more like some behind the scenes stuff too. But la I would yeah. say this year's team is. I don't know. It it feels like it's it's confusing, but also you look at the injuries and the thirty three yeah. different starting lineups, and you're like, yeah, this is pretty easily explainable. I just think it's confusing when we're in it day to day and trying to figure out, okay, you could beat New Orleans and you could beat, but then you, you lose against New Orleans and then you beat Cleveland. That part is confusing, but like bigger picture, zoom out. It's like, oh, like all the good players on the team were hurt for most of the year. Yeah, no wonder that they struggled a little bit. 
Um, Brian yeah. writes in, does the huge disparity between the last two games say more about the Heat or the teams that they were playing? Sort of related to the last question. We got a, got a theme here going. What do you think? I, I, I kind of tend to think it was uh, more reflective of the opponent rather than anything else. Like the Pelicans played a really good game plan. They had been playing well of late. And I think they were motivated by the comments from Jimmy Butler, the ejections, oh, yeah. the kind of the heated the heated nature of the previous matchup and everything else like that. So I think they were looking at at Friday's matchup and going, oh, okay, all right, you you, you punked us at home. Now we're going to go do the same with you. So they were clearly motivated and and they punched Miami in the face and then they, there was no looking back from that point forward. Conversely, Cleveland in a bad stretch, going through their injuries and everything else like that. And I know that's not necessarily an excuse, but they kind of rolled over. Uh, a little bit more quickly and unexpectedly than you might have expected. And and so uh, Miami took advantage of that, which is what they're supposed to do. So I, again, I think it's more, I would say if you're looking at whether or not this is just reflective of who Miami is or rather than the opponents, I would say it's probably 80, 20, the opponents just having a very different mindset between the two. Yeah. I don't think the heat are going to go out and start blowing out the top three seeds by 40 points every night from now, now on, based yeah. on yeah, yeah. so uh, i'm with you i think you nailed it uh the Cavs. i just again i've never seen a team not want to play basketball more during an nba season than that Cavs team tonight it, they just did not care and uh credit to miami for doing what they had to do uh, but the pelicans came in like you said a strong team they took care of business and uh and cleveland did basically whatever the opposite of that is um but Cavs I fans are right like the, yeah Cavs fans are like in shambles after this a huge blowout. It like, should be. It's I, embarrassing. I, I, that was embarrassing. If I was a Cavs fan, I would be absolutely embarrassed. This is more embarrassing than sending out a a, 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 a hit note on LeBron James and Comic Sans. Like, this is the most embarrassing thing. You know what they should do? Is should, they should find a, a trade partner for Donovan Mitchell. And I don't know what that team mm. might be. Right. I don't know. But That's I mean, idea. I think they should just even forfeit the playoffs, trade Donovan now, right. or get it the season's done. You think they take Haywood Highsmith for Donovan Mitchell? Straight up? I don't know. Scored more know. points they than Donovan throw it tonight. First. I mean, hey, they throw Haywood's it first. defense, though. I mean, I, you'd be missing his defense. Be, I don't know. I don't yeah, really they know They get a Miami good two-way player. He's younger. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I, I, you know they got to throw in some Better picks. Better contract. Yeah. They might <laughs> Draft collateral to go with Donovan there. We're taking on Thanks that huge contract. <laughs> We're doing them a favor, really. Thanks for making Lockdown Heat your first listen every day. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube and follow us on your podcast app.